How it folk, my name is the Meta Goblin, and today we're going to be talking about how to level very fast while playing the warrior class in vanilla World of Warcraft. In this video we're going to be covering which specs to choose, what kind of gear you want to be using, do you want to use a two-handed weapon, do you want to go dual wield, that kind of thing. We could be talking about how to kill a mob very fast, how to survive multiple mobs, how to escape mobs. Uh, we're going to be talking about some awesome macros to improve your quality of life, what dungeons you should be doing and uh, you know how you should be doing those dungeons, how often should you be doing those dungeons, that kind of thing. We'll be talking about which quests to do in which order, um, mostly it's going to be talking about add-ons, uh, what spells you should be learning as you level up and which ones you can afford to miss out, and we'll briefly talk about professions. So you may be watching this video deciding whether or not to play a warrior. People may have told you it's the most difficult class to level in the game. Well, they'll be right, but the kind of people who say, oh, it's a real pain, it's not really worth doing, it's absolutely horrible, those kind of people are absolute pussies, right? Because in this video, I'm going to teach you how to be skilled enough, right? All the strategies in this video are going to make you skilled enough to turn your tune into an absolute DPS monster, and you'll have absolutely no problem. I mean, just look at the kind of things you can do, like, in this clip. <laughs> I mean, as you can see there, you know, taking down multiple mobs, it's, it's easily done. You're going to be learning, you're going to, I'm going to teach you how to do stuff like that. So, let's jump in. What spec, what spec should you be doing uh, to level as a warrior? Right, what you want to do is a Fury two-handed spec. It's going to appear on the screen right now. Up until level 40, right, the talents, you know, for Fury are just better low level. But, when you get to level 40, you're going to switch over to uh, mortal, the Mortal Strike build, so you can switch over to Arms as soon as you reach level 40 and then go a bit into Fury to get that crit chance up. You can have like, what, 15% crit chance with an axe? Um, so yeah, it's very useful to have high crit chance and then when you do, with your crits, you know, you can do extra dot damage and all that nice thing. Anyway, let's move on. So you may be wondering, you know, what kind of weapon should you use? Do a dual wield, uh, in, you know, because you may be thinking, oh, I've got, I'm in Fury spec, I should be dual wielding. No, that's completely wrong. Um, you want to be using a big, big fuck off two handed weapon, right? It's the only way, f it's the way forward. Basically, when you dual wield, you have a high chance to miss. So, and uh, you're going to be missing a lot, right? That's going to happen, especially if you're taking down mobs high level than you. It's going to get a pain in the ass. What you need is a big two handed weapon. Slower, the better. The reason why slower. Like, the slower the weapon, the higher initial damage that the weapon is going to do with each swing. So a faster weapon is going to do less damage per swing, but a big weapon is going to do more damage per swing. And what that basically means is it's going to increase the damage of most of your abilities. Like, for instance, heroic strike damage is going to be increased, overpower damage is going to be increased, and cleave damage is going to be increased. So your special ability melee hit uh, damage ability things, they're going to do more damage the slower your weapon is, and it just it just works out better on, on DPS wise, you can basically be able, to do, basically be able to do better bursts and kill mobs faster, but while you're leveling up, always get a really good one handed weapon, you want it to be very fast, preferably with a high stamina stat, and uh, obviously with a shield again with a very high stamina stat, This is, and this is obviously for tanking, you want to be tanking your dungeons now and again, we'll talk about that later, but yeah, faster the better, because it's just better for generating aggro. So, um, yeah. So, let's start talking about combat. How the hell do you, you know, what kind of thing are you going to be doing? How how the hell do you smack someone in the face? That's what I'm going to teach you in this next section. So, as you can see here, we have a clip. What you're going to do, right? First thing you're going to do, if you can charge, most of the time you might be rage pulling, but if you can charge a mob, which is obviously going to be better, this is your basic rotation, right? You're going to charge, you're going to pop Blood Rage while in the middle of the charge, right, to generate rage, and you're going to pop a Heroic Strike before you actually get to melee range as well, because as soon as you press charge, the you're going to hit the mob very, very quick, as soon, basically as soon as you get into melee range. You don't want the first hit to be white damage, you want the first hit to be a, a Heroic Strike, so it just, it just saves on damage, it just, well, it just increases your damage by a lot. 
So yeah, the first strike is going to be a yellow hit. After that you may pop 2-3 to three heroic strikes, but what we want to do, especially if mobs run away in fear, uh, before like at the 30-40% to 40 health range, what you want to be doing is banking your rage, right? And it's because of Execute. Execute will do more damage based on how much rage you have, and when you pop the execute. You want it. You want it to finish the mob. You want it to kill the mob. Now and again, you may finish. You know, the mob might have like a bit of health left, and that's a problem if that mob runs away because you can. You, if you've got a slow weapon, it's going to take you ages for to do damage again. So that's why you should always bank rage before you finish the mob off, so you kill it very quickly before it even has a chance to run away and won't pull any more mobs. So let's have a look at it in action. Um, so first you can see charging in there, Blood Rage in the middle of a charge and Heroic Strike before you even appear at the mob in a big nice crit. Uh, now I'm banking Rage and okay apparently I've been ganked. Okay let's do, an let's do another do another clip. So in this clip as you can see um, I'm charging, Blood Raging and Heroic Strike in like before, like basically you're pressing those three keybinds before you even reach the target and then just heroic strike in a few times and banking your rage for the execute at the end but I kind of messed it up in this video. So with the range pull, similar thing, you're going to just shoot your bow or your arrow, uh, gun, whatever you got and then you can pop blood rage as soon as possible. Then unfortunately you probably won't be able to get your yellow hit in before the mob gets to you but it's fine. Just get your white hit in and then follow up with your heroic strike and basically rinse and repeat. Uh, another thing to note, obviously pop out a shell whenever available. Um, like I like to pop it. Like what a good way to do your do your battle shout is to essentially like if you've got rage left over, which you may not if you're executing well. Um, but if you don't need to execute, then try try and pop. Um, you don't you don't want to be popping your battle shout like when you go into a fight. You want to well you will be doing it in in the middle of a fight now and again, but you don't you don't be, you don't be doing it that often. So yeah, and let the duration get pretty low. And if you don't have battle shout, I mean, don't you don't have to reapply it like as soon as possible. But anyway, let's talk. Uh, so that's the range pull. Two mobs at once, right? What you're gonna do essentially is exactly the same as I've been teaching you, but you're gonna swap heroic strike with cleave. Cleave is a very underrated ability. It does a ridiculous amount of damage. It costs about five rage more, which is not a lot, and it's very very easy to kill two mobs at once, as you can see in this clip. So don't worry. You can very easily take down two mobs at once. Fair enough. You may not have a lot of health left, but you know you can do it. If you that's the thing about worry. You just it's you're a glass cannon, right? You got to do your damage very high, very high damage, and just you know, and that's it. If, you don't, if you're not doing high enough damage, then yeah, you're going to suffer. So, let's talk about escaping. As you can see here, what you're going to do, I just use this as an example, I didn't actually need to escape in this situation, but what you're going to do is wait until you've got 10 rage, right? If you've got no rage and you need to run away, tank that mob, right? Just tank there, get one melee swing in, and then pop your hand, hamstring, and then start running away. While you're running away, you may want to swap into um, defensive stance, you may want to put your shield on with got macros for that later on in the next section and then you know sometimes the mob the hamstring will run out if it runs out and you mob, you know the mob's probably going to proper chase you then just stop again bank your rage up again pop the hamstring and then run away again that's what i would do so let's uh, start talking about macros now on the macro the macro here that you can see is the ultimate attack macro you may be thinking you may be trying to try try to make a macro like a start attack macro and you keep pressing it and then it stops you from attacking this is basically the fix for that what you're going to do as you can see um what what the macro does is it pops um it's going to basically it, it works very strangely it's telling the macro is telling the game to hit click something on your action bar so that's why it would not like kind of deselect and stop attacking. The catch is right as you can see. There's a number in this macro that is the action bar number, well, the action button number. You want to put a ta attack in. I I'll put on screen here like the number for each like action button. But you want to put change that number to wh wherever you want to put the attack because you have basically put you got to put attack on your bar. As you can see, I have it um, as a the action button sixty. And it is kind of like a bit of a faff, but what I do is I put, I put some, I put like another spell on my bars, and I kind of like trial and error to find out where where the uh, what the macro, which button the macro is pressing. So it is a bit of a faff, but obviously we have heroic strike in this macro as well. So I just keep pressing. If I tap that endlessly, it's not going to stop me from attacking. Yeah, the macros are pretty difficult in vanilla. They probably need a separate video. But anyway, here we have the stance dance macro. 
What is the uh, macro do is swap you out of battle stance and defensive stance. It will also swap you out of your one-handed and, and your shield to your two-handed, providing you have your one-handed and two-handed um, within the top. It's the top left corner of your first bag. So you need to keep your shield and your one-handed and your two-handed weapon in that little area at the top. And it will just swap the weapon, because the macro basically says, right, click this uh, thing in your bag. That's how the macro works. There isn't really a better way to do it, um, unless you get uh, add-ons. So, and also, we have a few auto sta auto automatic stance stance swapping macros. Basically, you know, you, you want to charge, but you're in defensive stance. You just keep tapping this macro. You'll pop you into, into battle stance so you can charge. Simple as that. And uh, you can apply that to any macro you want. Just swap the names, as you can see in the macro, with, you know, defensive stance or battle stance with the ability. And it's pretty straightforward. So, let's start finish off, finishing off the video. Let's talk about... Um, how to basically level fast, what quest order you want to be doing. I have got another video about this, but you know, I'll just briefly talk about it now. What you want to do is get the add-on called the Vanilla Guide, links in the description, and uh, do that, get that add-on with the add-on called Questy. Questy is going to tell you where the quests are, where to kill the mobs, where to loot the mobs, uh, where to get quests, where to turn in your quest, all that kind of thing. So group these uh, two add-ons together and questing will be very fast and straightforward. And um, dungeons, right, let's talk about dungeons. I, I would recommend doing at least dun uh, at least uh, every single dungeon once. You may want to do them twice if it's uh, really important for you to obtain certain items like Mr. Smite's Hammer. If it's like a really good two-handed weapon or piece of gear that you need to get from a dungeon, then it, I'd recommend doing it multiple times because you know you do need your gear as a warrior. But um, what I would do, so each dungeon has quests, uh, and what you do right is you type into Google say for instance like stop the stockades guide and it will come up to this archived there's an archived website from i think it's called wow pro and it'll be like jamie's guide to the stockade so this guy called jamie has made like all the uh, vanilla dungeon guides back in the day and at the top of these guides it will tell you exactly which quests go are in that dungeon right what you want to do is you want to look at those quests on a database website like AO Wow, which is a vanilla database. Check what where those quests chains start because a lot of them, you, fair enough, you get them from different areas and you can probably just share them. But a lot of them you have to do a certain quest before. Like for instance, you have to do the Dark Iron War quest before you can actually go and do the Stockades uh, quest. Um, so make sure you get every single quest available and then run the dungeon and you know the dungeon quest quest experience is ridiculous is quite ridiculous it's like double what a normal quest is so it's always worth doing every single dungeon at least once to get all those quests so uh, actually let's start talking about spells I mean there is a fair amount of spells that you don't need like for instance you're not gonna need rend you're barely gonna be using rend maybe you'll start using it when you've got the armor spec but it takes so long to do its damage it's better to just save all your rage for a heroic strike and burst the target down professions um personally i would either recommend alchemy or enchanting Enchant enchanting is very useful for leveling um you may want to ditch it later but um and also recommend alchemy because of the potions you can make, that's another good thing. It makes you a lot of money at end game. The other professions, you know, they're kind of useful at end game. You know, you you know, if you, but mostly the crafting ones they can't really make you a lot of money. They can craft you a few sets, but personally, I just recommend alchemy or enchanting. But if you have any other preference, it doesn't. To be honest, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter that much, to be honest. But anyway, that is probably going to be the end of this video. If you have any more questions, um. Be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them. I may have missed a few things out. And in which case I will be releasing a PvE guide, like a like an end game guide, later on when I actually get to that point in the game. But anyway lads and, and lasses, my name is Metagoblin, until my next video, ciao!